Hello and welcome back to the Stationary Dev. Today we have another pin review and this one is uh, a special one for me just because I think this is a uh, pin that doesn't get much exposure at all uh, but one that I think everyone should know about. Um, and so without further ado let's just get right into it. As you can see it is a cross pin. Uh, this is the cross Bailey light. Now cross has a cross Bailey pen and it's an all metal pen. It's a little bit bigger than this. It's also uh, quite a bit more expensive than this as well. This is the light version. So it is the plastic, um, plastic version. It has a metal clip and everything, but plastic um, body. So it's kind of uh, one of their entry level pens from cross. And couple things about it so uh, number one it's available absolutely everywhere um, and by that I mean you can go to an office supply store uh, usually and find these on the shelves of the office supply store uh, which you don't always get with fountain pens it's one of the only fountain pens that I've seen on the shelves of the office supply store um, like entry-level pens and so um, I've I bought um, this particular one on Amazon, uh, but I've seen them and bought them at Office Max, Office Depot. I'm pretty sure Staples has them uh, as well. So for a pen that you can buy off of the shelf at you know your common big box office supply store, um, it's a pretty good deal. So on Amazon, these run about fifteen dollars uh, a piece. They come in a whole bunch of colors and, and different uh, trims and everything. Some really cool colors, I think. And, um, yeah, and then I, I believe at uh, Office Max, I believe it's closer to $20, uh, maybe. And uh, we'll see kind of what all comes included. I didn't keep the box uh, for this pen for whatever reason, but if you buy it on Amazon, it comes in like a cross box. If you buy it, um, I believe, you know, if you buy it from a big box store, it comes in like a um, plastic sort of like display box that they can hang on the on the wire or on the on the shelf or whatever. Um, it doesn't come with a converter, but it does come with uh, two cross ink cartridges. And then also the cross ink cartridges, they can be bought once again at pretty much all the big box office supply stores. Um, so you can buy the pen, comes with two cartridges, you can buy another um, set of cartridges as well, uh, which are fairly cheap, and actually Cross Ink is really, really good. I've been really impressed by the Cross Ink that I have used so far. So having all that, you know, that whole kit available to you, um, I think it's really um, a really good deal. It doesn't come with a converter, which is, I think is the only downside, the only detractor for this pen. Um, the, and because the converter, if you buy it online, it usually costs between $12 and $19. Cross makes two different kinds of converters. Their screw-in converter, which is a lot more available, and then also their push-in converter. This pen takes the push-in converter. So just make sure you get the right converter um, for the pen. So I'm pretty sure that the push-in converter is the only one that fits in this pen, but um, I could be wrong. But I'm pretty sure I read somewhere that that's the only one that fits this one. So uh, $12 to $19 is pretty, I mean, that's pretty insanely expensive. It takes a $15 pin and, and bo bo bumps it up to a $27 pin. So in the $30 price range if you want the converter. Uh, but it, I can you know speak for the converter. It's good quality. Um, and uh, and the ink as well for the cartridges, good quality ink as well. Uh, this pen was actually my daily driver for about a year and a half, maybe a little bit more. And by daily driver, I mean I use this pen every single day for about six days out of the week. Sometimes all seven days out of the week, I would use this pen uh, nonstop every every single day. It used it every day. It's been dropped. It's been kept in my pocket. Uh, it's been you know tossed in a bag. It hasn't been babied. It's not supposed to be babied. I don't think, uh, you know, it's an entry level pen. It's sort of like a beater everyday use, you know, just reliable, super reliable fountain pen, which is one of its positives. 
Um, so yeah, uh, let's take a look at it. You have the uh, sort of cross branding there. You have a metal clip that's just a, a bit metal clip, but it works very well. It hasn't stretched out or anything. I have, uh, I used a Lamy All-Star for a daily driver for a while and it's clip kind of started started to loosen uh, this hasn't had that that problem it's still firm and it's still uh, you know taut against the body of the pen it has a sort of cross little finial there uh, that's metal and then silver trim the band around the middle doesn't say anything it's just kind of typical cross styling uh, rounded end end cap there it is a snap cap, which makes it super convenient, and why it, part of the reason why it was one of my daily drivers is because, you know, it's super quick to just uncap the snap cap, take a note, and then, you know, put it back in. Uh, so snap cap, I've never had it dry out on me or anything. It does have a plastic uh, sleeve in the cap there, so it, it stays uh, stays wet. The nib always stays wet. I've never had a problem with it drying out or or anything like that, or hard starting, skipping, anything like that. I've, I've put just about every ink that I've owned in this pen, and it's worked pretty much with all of them. Uh, you can tell the you know there's the drier inks and the wetter inks, but it's worked flawless with all of them. Um, another benefit of this pen is I think it'll be comfortable for everybody. You can see mine is kind of worn down, yeah. It's, it's lost some of its luster. It has a lot of micro scratches and all that. But like I said, I use this absolutely every day for a year and a half at least, um, plus some. Uh, but the the benefit though is you can see there is no step between the barrel and the section. Uh, it is just kind of a smooth transition. All you have is this sort of uh, middle uh, metal ring right here, and that's the only. Um, thing there, but it's it's a smooth transition. So no, so I think everybody can probably comfortably hold this pen. It is a thinner pen. Um, you know, to comparing it to something like the uh, Diplomat Arrow, you can see it's quite a bit thinner. Um, but I mean, it's once again note taking pen. Uh, you know, it's a light version of a bigger metal pen, so it's meant to be smaller, more compact. You know, chunk in a bag, keep it at the office, whatever. Uh, kind of pin. There's a tiny little lip where the cap grabs there, uh, but nothing much. It, it kind of uh, is con, what convex, and so it kind of uh, narrows down to the tip. Uh, but it is a very comfortable pin. The length is fine for me. I I use it uncapped and I mean un uh, unposted, and so it's very comfortable for me. I can use this pin for you know take just a note, or I can use it to you know write something longer as well. Uh, it is very comfortable in the hand, and it's kind of one of those pens that just kind of disappears in the hand, which is kind of what you want from an, an office pen or everyday writer uh, kind of pen. You want it to kind of disappear and not have to worry about how you're holding it or uh, your hand getting tired or anything like that. So very usable. Uh, we get to the nib there. It is a stainless steel nib. This one is extra fine, as you can see from the bottom of that cross logo there. So you have the cross logo, it's date, USA, and uh, which I think is a very classy logo. And the other thing I like about this pen is the nib. The nib is fantastically smooth. You'll see on the writing sample, but it's fantastically smooth. I've never had a problem from this pen. The reason why I switched from the Lamy to this pen is because the nib was fantastic. Um, it was just so smooth and uh, so nice it just has a cheap plastic feed there uh, but does the job wonderfully it is a little bit broader for an extra fine it's definitely a european extra fine um but but yeah you get some metal threads here onto some plastic threads which is a downside but i haven't had any problems in the years that i've owned this pen so far and i you know it might last your lifetime, but I don't think it was kind of built for durability anyway. It's sort of, you know, like I said, just a beater, everyday use kind of pen. Here we get the converter, which it doesn't come with, but this is the cross push-in converter. It works very well. Um, even after using it so much, it still is smooth, you know, smooth operation. Not a lot of ink or anything's been trapped behind the converter or anything like that. It just works 
will. Uh, it only has one downside, which I'll get to here in a minute. Um, but if you push it in there, the only downside that I've seen is it does kind of have some play in it. Uh, which maybe if you get this thread, if you can fit the threaded one in here, I don't think you can. But if you can, maybe that eliminates some of the wiggle. Uh, but it does wiggle, so you will hear um, it does kind of rattle if you like bang it a certain direction. So that might be a little bit annoying, but that's really the only downside for the converter because it works really well. So let's get this thing inked. And the ink that I'm going to fill this pen with, we're going to go with a classic uh, Diamine Majestic Blue, a nice, um, I think, office appropriate ink, but also has a little bit of pizzazz, so it might spice up your office ink life. It, it is a, a good sheener ink from Diamine, but also just flows really well, um, works in a lot of pens, and it really makes the pen shine that you use it in. So we're going to do Majestic Blue from Diamine. Let's get that in here. Uh, I usually prefer to syringe feel, especially from these silly little Diamine bottles that you can't always fit a pen in. So we're going to do syringe feel. Get some ink in there. And also that way you can get a nice, ooh, a nice big feel. Put the rest back in the bottle. Try not to make a giant mess. Get that out of the way. Get the converter into the pen. And we're gonna get a drop of ink out of there. You can see it flows really well. It's at the nib, so we're gonna put the cap on, I mean the back on, put the cap on, put the cap on to our ink. And let's give this thing a test. As always, I'm gonna be testing on some Rhodia dot pad. Uh, this is the 80 GSM. And blank pad, so get a nice clear view of the ink and the pen. And let's get going. So cap off. Let's see if it starts up right away. I'm actually just going to, yep, start it up right away. And we'll get started. So we have the cross. Bailey light. Uh, this is an extra fine steel nib. And the ink that we have in here is Diamine Majestic Blue. Now one thing I have found with this pen is it usually does write a little on the dry side, which is really good for an office environment when you're using, you know, crappy paper or whatever, you're writing a lot on copy paper. Having a dry pen is actually a good thing because you're not going to get a lot of bleeding or feathering or at least not as much. Um, so that's, that's a positive. Uh, but you will notice when you use a drier ink, you definitely feel the drier uh, qualities coming through. Uh, you feel the paper a little bit more. It never skips or you know does anything weird like that. It has a good flow, um, but it's just a dry, drier rider. Um, so if we do our smear test, like I said, Don My Majestic Blue does numbers for for pins for me. It's a nice saturated um, and and uh, wet ink to put in pins, so it works really well with this pen and ink combination. So it flows well, it just kind of feels a little drier than you're writing. It's not going to be like a writing on glass situation, but it is a super smooth nib. There's no rough edges or anything with this nib. And as you see, it kind of points down a little bit on the tip there. So it kind of almost is like a posting nib where it has that that sort of hook hooking down on the end of the, the nib there, which I really like. I think it, it gives it 
a really cool writing experience. So let's do a sentence and then we'll come back and talk a little bit more about the writing. So we have, Yeah, it's like writing with an old friend. I love the the uh, you know extra fine, or I guess it's definitely a Western extra fine, or not Western European extra fine uh, nib. But it writes beautifully, um, you know, perfect. Makes my handwriting look as good as it probably could. Um, it feels really good. Writes wet in every direction. Especially on, on upstrokes, a lot of pins struggle on the upstrokes, but you see there, no problems at all in any direction. Writes super well, super smooth. A um, little bit of audible feedback. Like I said, it's not um, not glassy smooth, but it is absolutely beautifully smooth. As for any uh, bounce or flex, you actually do get a little bit of bounce. I don't know if you can probably can make that out on the camera there but just because that tip is pointed down in like a posting uh, kind of fashion I'm trying to get it to focus on it but it likes the words too much uh, just because the tip is fo focused down goodness uh, it it when you when if you put a little bit of pressure it just kind of push it straightens out that tip and so it does have a little bit of bounciness for a still nib and you can probably get just a tiny bit of line variation, but it's not made for that. But you can get some out of it just because it has that posting-like uh, tip there. And uh, I am seeing the sheen on the ink. Um, you know, any shading or anything, you'll also even see, even though it's a, it's a, uh, you know, still nib and an extra fine nib, you'll still get the properties of the ink that you're looking for let me try to see if i can maybe you can see the sheen it's rhodia paper so it's it's not the best example but especially on the t there you can probably see it's not the best example but um but you still get it on the rhodia just from this ink this ink is beautiful it works well uh like i said i think i, I covered pretty much everything with this. It's not really made for reverse writing or anything like that. I don't usually test for that anyway. Uh, it's a, it keeps up well. Like I said, you can write super fast. You can write for, for forever and it'll just keep going. The feed is reliable and all that. So that's my review of the Cross Bailey Light. Some final thoughts on the pen uh, itself. I think it is probably the best first fountain pen or my recommendation for the best first fountain pen at the very minimum at the very least it should absolutely be in the conversation for the first fountain pen i actually bought one of these uh when i bought my one at office max i was buying that to give to my brother-in-law for a christmas present because um he and his wife like to write and so i bought the pen and a pack of cartridges and a, a black and red uh you know journal and that was, you know, a great gift and is a great intro, I think, to fountain pens, especially because the cartridges are so readily available. The ink is good in the cartridges. You can just pop those in. It's really good for a beginner. It's also good for a daily driver pen, one to just keep at the office that you're not too afraid of breaking or you're not too afraid of getting stolen out of your pen cup. Uh, you know, really, I mean, it is $15, which is significant, but... For a fountain pen, that's sort of, um, you know, one that you're not absolutely crushed to, to have go disappearing on you. Um, I think it absolutely needs to be in the conversation. I think it beats the Safari. I think it beats, you know, the All-Star because I switched from those pens to this pen for my daily driver. I think it also beats the Metropolitan just because it's more easily available. Uh, you can find it anywhere. You can go to the store and buy it right now. Uh, you don't have to hunt it down on the internet. You don't have to confront Amazon or anything like that. You can just go buy it. And that there's some beauty in that. There's some value in that. Um, Twisby might be the only one that beats it just because Twisby for, you know, 30 bucks or whatever the Twisby is nowadays 
plus it's other um, entry level options like the what is it the swipe and uh, the other entry level options that Twisby comes with it might have this one beat um, but I think it puts up a good fight in that entry level fountain pen category so I highly strongly recommend this pen I've had nothing but good things from it I've used it like I said every day for a year and a half and never had any problems out of it it's still a beautiful rider I still you know like to come back to it and put it in rotation and uh, yeah I mean I can't say really enough good things about it so let me know if you've used the cross bailey light if you've seen it um, I highly recommend you try it out if you haven't, if you if you need an entry-level fountain pen or you need a fountain pen to gift to a relative or a friend, I think this is a great option for that. If you haven't already, make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel. It's uh, free and easy to do. It doesn't cost you anything other than a second to hit the button. And uh, I think that's it. So until next time, I'll catch you all later.